So my name's Rod Martin. Thanks for coming today. Uh, this little uh, session is born out of some frustration, which I'll share in just a minute. Uh, but again, the link to the PDF is uh, rodsurl.com slash layoutbuilder. That's a, a Drupal site that I made my own URL redirect service for, because I got tired of not having my own redirects. It's really fun. And again, the pre-configured site is at rodsurl.com slash starter site. That'll start up a, a Gitpod repository for you, and uh, it's the entire site that I'm going to cover today. Uh, as I mentioned, my name's Rod Martin. I live in Dillsboro, Indiana. I rode the motorcycle up. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I've been to most of the DrupalCon since Chicago, and I won this Drupal 8 hockey jersey at uh, DrupalCon LA. I still play ice hockey a couple times a week, typically against 20 and 30 year olds, those snotty little kids and because uh, they don't give me a break even though I'm old. But I have a lot of fun, and I ride a motorcycle pretty much everywhere I go, including here this week. So this is me on the Dragon's Tail uh, in North Carolina, 319 curves in 11 miles. If you ride motorcycles, that's pretty much the best it gets. It's a lot of fun. So I uh, had a great time coming down. I was mentioning earlier, it's 35 degrees when I left, 30, uh, and so peeling off layers as we came. I've been teaching Drupal since 2011. I started with OS training back then, teaching Drupal 7 and then 8, now 9 and 10, of course. I've uh, been to most of the Drupal cons, taught at most of the Drupal cons, uh, privileged to be at a lot of Drupal camps. I taught the absolute beginner's guide to Drupal yesterday. Um, and so I teach a lot of Drupal. This session is born out of the frustration I experience with content editors and marketing people, because I teach a five-day five Drupal immersion class, two days site building, a day of theming, and two days of module development. I teach that for Acquia, I teach it for Promet Source, at Title Learning, and OS Training. I'm kind of a contractor for everybody. Nobody's made me sign a non-compete yet, so I'm all good, right? Um, but the frustration I hear over and over again is, this isn't as good as Elementor in WordPress. There's, it just doesn't work as well. And that's true, it doesn't. Uh, so, this session is born out of the idea is, can we make Layout Builder work for the site builder, not the developer? There is no code today. Zero code, no plugins, no components. Um, and so, for some of you, that's going to go, well, he called this an advanced course. That's not advanced. No, it's not. It's a complete Layout Builder experience for anybody who wants to use it. So, in that sense, it's advanced. Um, so, back in the day, you remember this cartoon. I'm sure those of you who've been around for a while, the learning curve of popular content management systems, and when you add Drupal, it looks like this. Um, I just don't think that's true anymore. I teach a lot of beginners uh, through my training, and I think Drupal 10 is the best version of Drupal ever, uh, hands down, and I love Drupal 10. So again, why are we doing this today? Well, again, it's born out of that frustration that I hear over and over again at the end of our site building class where, well, this is all great, but it's really hard to get it to look the way you want without doing template overrides and engaging the services of a themer. So today is designed to save you thousands and thousands of dollars so you don't have to engage the services of the themer for uh, template override files. So here's the way this is going to work, or here's how I put it together. Uh, core and contributed modules only. I'm going to share my picks. Now, you may have different ones. For those of you who have been in the Layout Builder space for a while, and probably some of you have, you might have your favorites um, that I don't pick. And, and that's OK, right? There's lots and lots of contributed modules now around Layout Builder. And that's really exciting. So we're going to uh, basically just cover the ones that I think uh, work well. In the guide, I say the ones I chose are basically because I wanted ones with the least amount of friction to make them work together without any hassle. That didn't always work out well, as you know, from if you've done any work here in this space. It's kind of rough, but it's pretty good. The thing that excites me the most in Drupal is what Dries calls the ambitious site builder. That's who I work with. I work with site builders. I don't work with developers very much. Although I've got to tell you, the other reason I did this is because I do a lot of uh, content editor training. Not only for Promet Source and Taito, but for Acquia as well. It drives me insane when I have to teach a site 
where the developers didn't do the basic foundation stuff of installing the Linkit module and making that work, or taking the time to do proper image styles and using something like focal point, scale, and crop to give editors the best experience. And for heaven's sakes, get rid of the media or the image upload field permanently and use the media model. I see that all the time, so it drives me nuts. That's one of the that's the other reason I decided to do this this course and actually build my own starter site for this person. The person who doesn't want to get into the code every day, but wants to build Drupal sites, really good Drupal sites. So hopefully I've achieved that. I would value your feedback. I really would on everything we're going to talk about. Uh, this is the site building workflow that we use. Again, this has got nothing to do with today. You can download that at my blog, and I'll share that a little bit later. Um, here are the modules we're going to cover. Um, let me get that out of the way. Bootstrap, layout builder, layout builder blocks, styles, restrictions, reorders, section library, layout builder modal, layout builder direct add, and layout builder save and edit. Uh, yes, there are others. If you are coming for Layout Builder Plus, I've never been able to get it to work. So it was too, there was too much friction for me to include this on the list. And there are others that do similar things that I chose this instead. By the way, all of the slides and the documentation is at um, the link I shared earlier, and I'll share it again before we go. The secret sauce to my version of this is custom block types. I tried to get rid of that little thing that's on the screen, and I, it's stuck up there, so I, I apologize. Well, you may need to take a sample, you know, later. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's that? Take oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll be around. Yeah. Uh, a bunch of custom block types. Now, I know there's better ways to do this, but again, I wanted a no-code solution. So I'm using custom block types that actually, some of the custom block types use Layout Builder to build the layouts that go into Layout Builder, because you can do that. Again. I'll share that as we go. I'm with you there. Custom block types first. Yeah. I love, I love what you can do with custom block types. Um, so anyway, um, there is a site, if you wanted to go to that, uh, drupalhelps.com. Now, this is not finished. and it, uh, But it's a demo. of Again, it's an online demo that you can look at that uses everything I'm going to talk about today. Um, and so uh, drupalhelps.com. Uh, I'm planning on about 100 tutorials there at that site. Again, just to be helpful, I'm giving this stuff away because that's what we do in Drupal, right? Um, and uh, so hopefully that's helpful helpful uh, as we go. All right, so. I can't, I can't believe that domain was available for you to buy. I know. I couldn't believe it either. I, there was a few I tried to get, and I, I couldn't get the ones, all of them as I wanted. All right, so this is the demo site, and this is a GitHub <coughs> repository. If you've never used it before, Ofer Sha'al. How many of you know Ofer? None of you. He's here. You need to find him. You need to say thank you to him. He has developed this entire Drupal environment in a Gitpod repo that uses DDEV, he and along a few others, that literally saved my business. I, I've done Drupal training all over the world, and when COVID hit and Acquia's dev desktop went away, how on earth do you do training for government with government computers that you won't allow, you're not allowed to install anything on? This has saved my life. It's one click, and it spins up a Drupal site. So when you go to rodsurl.com slash starter site, it will spin up this site for you in a Gitpod repository where you have access to the entire code base, the command line tools, DDEV, Composer, and Drush, all built into a browser. It's freaking awesome. I've got videos on it. If you go to ostraining.com, if you Google OS training OS tips, sorry, OS tips YouTube, I've got probably 100 uh, short videos at YouTube on all of this stuff. And hopefully you'll find those helpful. All right, so let's start with the modules. The first module we're going to look at is, oh, and I'm not logged in. <clears throat> the login, by the way, is admin and admin. I know, eh? really secure. But you can't actually get to this site without being logged into your Gitpod account. So it's all good. Now I'm not going to talk about the basics of Layout Builder. I'm just assuming this morning you tried Layout Builder before. So the first module we're going to look at again is um, Layout Builder... What did I say? <laughs> Bootstrap Layout Builder. Um, 
This is the first module that you install because what it does is it gives you bootstrap columns, bootstrap goodness in all of your sections. Uh, and it's fantastic. Now in the guide, let me just show you how the guide is broken down. Oh, in the guide I give you a quick overview of some other page builders in Drupal. I just didn't think we'd have time to look at those. There's Acquia Site Studio, which I can't even imagine how expensive that is. Mm -hmm. I do training on it, but I've never actually had an account where I could use it myself. Uh, so I do all of Acquia's content editor training for them, and it's really, it's the best. There's no question about it. But it's Acquia, so it's expensive, and you're locked in. DXPR Layout Builder is really excellent. It's not expensive. $75 per month per user unlimited licenses. That's really good. It's nowhere near as robust as Site Studio, but it's better than what I'm going to show you today. But again, it's not free and it's not contributed. Um, A10 Design has Mercury. You can't get a pricing unless you do the demo, so for me, that's a no go. Promit Source, who I do work for, has a project called Provis. Right now, you can download the distribution, but the pros are it's free for now. <coughs> They're working on a paid version for government, uh, and it's really, really good. Like, it's everything I'm going to show you that's been made very pretty, very, very, uh, very, very good. However, it's not upgradable, so once you download it, you're stuck. That's a problem they're working on. It's not configurable by a site builder. You've got to work with Provis to get any other configurations done. And you're locked into Provis once you start using it because it's a distribution, not a module. To me, that's a non-starter, even though I work for Promit. And hopefully nobody at Promit is listening or ever going to see this presentation. I use, I've used Provis. I love it. It's just it's not what I would do on a site. So again, there's the starter site you can use. Uh, huge thank you to Ofer. Um, and again, he's here. Find him. Say thank you from Rod. I just I can't appreciate this guy enough. All right. Um, so some of the features uh, uses DXPR, updated text formats with media, link it, button styles, uh, styles, and remove the image upload. The button block type uses a block token. Um, Google Map uses a simple GMap module to turn a one-line address into a Google Map. If you've never used that, it's really freaking awesome. Media Manager is completely enhanced with uh, keywords, usage statistics, and more. You can learn about that at, at that link there. And then I've just got a whole bunch of styles. I use, do not scream at me. I use Asset Injector to inject the CSS that I want for this site for now until I move it into a theme. Nobody's screaming at me, so maybe you will think that's okay. I know some people don't. I love Asset Injector. Yeah, yeah, it's just the best, right? All right. Um, in the book, I've got some layout builder basics with the documentation, the add-on modules. And of course, I've got it OS training, and I have a discount coupon for you at the end. All right. So uh, why I chose the ones I did, uh, again, no friction, no brainer stuff like bootstrap layout builder st uh, bootstrap styles, layout builder styles. If it didn't work out of the box, which for me is layout builder plus, I didn't. I looked so for somewhere else. I wanted as little friction as possible, and again tried to follow some best practices and things like that. Uh, lastly, while some organizations require modules to adhere to the security policy and have full releases, uh, there's a whole bunch of modules in this that don't. All right, bootstrap layout. Uh, the link is here. There is one huge issue when you install this by a composer, and that is the media library theme reset module is now deprecated. I have a link here that will show you how to fix it. If you've done it, patches at all in composer, it's not hard. Just follow the directions at that link, and you will switch out that module for iframe modal, which works very well as long as you don't try and use the section part in a modal because it blows up, but they, there are instructions there to make sure that that doesn't happen as well. Uh, the patch works really, really well. So what it does is it adds bootstrap styles to your section. So let's take a quick peek. When you install it, you have some settings here in config. You have the opportunity to build layouts. Again, I've never touched any of this. You have the uh, option of adding styles. If you don't uh, click any, they all apply, which I would suggest you do. And then in the settings here, 
Again, I've never changed anything. You've got up to 12 columns of, of layout. The trick with this for me is when you want to actually use it, structure, content types, landing page, and manage display, this is where you create the settings for uh, Bootstrap. So for instance, I don't like having 12 columns. So I, oops, where am I here? Um, layouts, there it is. So I turn off the, in the built-in ones, which are kind of useless, right? And then just turn on one th column through four column. You have to do that on every single content type where you want to use it, but it's brilliant. So if I go back to the site and click layout, and I click add section here, this is bootstrap layout. If I click a two column layout, again, I've got the option, oh, silly, crazy poster. I really want to rip it off. Anyway, box full, edge to edge, gutters, no gutters. You can choose the width or the uh, dimensions on desktop, tablet, and phone. Uh, don't worry about the style, that's a, a, another one coming later on. You can set up a background color, and I've added some colors here for you, uh, and they're, they're styled for you. As well, you can do a background image or a background video. Yes, ma'am? Um, for, for the phone section, um, do you have to create a different page for the phone section, or do you just check the for the phone. You know, oh, 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 no, 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 it's all built in. It's okay. That's what Bootstrap is good at. Okay. Right, Drupal is a mobile first CMS. Yeah. And so Bootstrap automatically just makes everything work on a phone. I just built a site for a small town where I live. The first comments they got back were, now you have to remember, the old site was built like in 1997, black background and yellow text, right? I built it with this starter site the most comments they've gotten is this looks amazing on a phone because that's what Drupal does and Bootstrap Styles works really, really well. So the trick, if you're going to do a two column layout, I always just put the mobile in 100% one column layout. So it just wraps automatically. Yeah. Um, with Bootstrap, you've got background, typography, you can choose colors and the alignment of text, spacing, margins and paddings, borders, shadows, and animations. And again, that's what Bootstrap Layout Builder gives you. Now, it, again, if you install it from Composer, you're gonna get that deprecated module still, so make sure you follow the patch that I put in the book. But adding a section is as simple as just clicking and selecting one. When you do that, let me just click Add Section. Well, it looks like that, except because of the screen resolution, it's on top of each other. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Hang on. That's my fault. Just a second. 50-50. You actually have to choose it. There we go. So now that just looks like normal layout builder, but it's complete with Bootstrap. So that's the first module I installed. It's fantastic and really awesome. The next module is Bootstrap Blocks. Quick question. So you're yeah. Sample site has all these modules. And Everything's all already. Yeah, and this is the sample site. Okay. So if you download the sample site, all the CSS is built in. Everything's built in. And I wanted to do that, and I'd love your feedback on it. I, I really do. So I mean, I'll give you my email address. I would love to hear what you think, positive and negative. Uh, the other thing with this is when you want to add your own classes and colors for the sections, you do that under. Uh, configuration, content authoring, bootstrap styles. You can add your own text colors and your own alignment. In fact, you can configure everything here. Um, you, of course, have to add the CSS. That's how those colors showed up when I showed you the background colors and the text colors. And again, it's all built in. Do you, you have access to like, a lot of the class names for, um, for your different like, like, um, you know, like sidebars and... Um, if it's in Bootstrap, you have access to it, you'd have to style it. Uh, I, no, there's no list of things. There's no listing of them. You'd have to go inspect and find them. But of course, you can override that as well. So that's what I've done. I've added the, added the colors and I've overridden a few things in the CSS. 
Again, some of you may not appreciate the whole acid injector thing, but that's okay. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not familiar with that. Acid injector is this. It allows you to insert CSS and JavaScript via a module in the back end without inputting it into your theme. Uh, again, for me, how I use it, I test, test, test with Acid Injector, and then I commit the CSS and JavaScript to the theme later on. This site is still a work in progress, but here's the, here's the CSS for those colors and buttons that I just showed you in the configuration. And you'll find that under Acid Injector in configuration development, okay? All right, the next one is Layout Builder Blocks. Layout Builder Blocks is the bootstrap for blocks that bootstrap is for the sections. You can't, you really do want to use both. Uh, no issues, no alternatives here, uh, and in the guide you'll see this all the way through. It, it adds the bootstrap styles like I just showed you in sections to the block layout as well. So if I add a block here, and I add a basic block, you'll see all the styles that were in the section layout are now in the block layout as well. Uh, this is popping up in a modal because of another module we'll cover in just a little bit. Uh, super helpful. And when you do create the styles for, um, uh, for the sections, you also they also show up here in the blocks. So that's that light blue, dark blue, and orange text. Those are custom colors. Again, you'll find those in the settings in the configuration and in the CSS. Does that work with views as well? Does it work with views? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. This is Layout Builder. Uh, well, I mean, like, 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 like you have in a block. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. Yes, absolutely. I'll show you in just a minute. Yeah, thank you. That's a great question. I didn't anticipate that question. Configuration is there. You select which styles to use and restrict them by block type. So all the styles that we showed you in sections, so one, two, three column layout, colors and more, what blocks can be used, uh, all of those restrictions are available as well for the, at the block layer, the block level. And it integrates seamlessly with uh, Bootstrap Layout Builder. And again, all of those styles and things like that are there. The next module I chose is Layout Builder Styles. This is by, uh, started by a guy named Brian Osborne out of Princeton University. I was there doing the training for them uh, several years ago, and he's he's brilliant. Like he's really he, he knew Drupal, but his entire web team didn't. So I said to him, "We're sitting in the quad." I got to sit in the quad at Princeton. I mean, that's pretty cool. Anyway, I thought it was cool. I talked. I said to Brian, "Why don't you contribute? You're doing some amazing work here for Princeton." So he did. He's got this one and another uh, a media replacement module that he's worked on. This is fantastic. Um, again, all of the. Uh, documentation is here. Uh, it, there is a great um, alternative, provides a lot more detail and customization. So this alternative here is great. What Layout Builder styles is it gives you a button to check. What this does is it gives you a whole bunch of fields to fill in. For most content editors, what would they prefer? They want a button. So that's why I chose Layout Builder styles versus this other one. This one's great, but it's not as simple or not as straightforward. This module allows site builders to select from a list of styles to apply to layout builder blocks and sections. So let me show you how that works. If I click add section here, I have one, uh, well here we'll go one column. I have one style here called banner. It's, and I'm sorry, it's way down here at the bottom. Uh, you can have as many here. There's categorization, so you can have sections, little drop downs of different styles. There's no limit to the number in the demo site. I've just got a couple. I've got banner on the sections, and I've got cards and rounded corners on the block types. Really fun stuff. Again, you have to write the CSS to make this work. So you put it in Asset Injector, and you define it in Layout Builder Styles, and all you just do is give it a name. It's that simple. You give it a name and a class, and then you write the CSS. When somebody checks there, what this particular one does is it actually does this. So I chose banner here. What this one does is it makes the text large. It gives a fixed height to the window, makes this the title very, very big with some shadow, this a little bit smaller. And although it doesn't actually fit in the editor here, 
that actually fits just fine when you click Save. One of the problems with Layout Builder, of course, like most WYSIWYG layout tools, including Site Studio from Acquia, is the preview is never exactly the same as the outcome. You just have to kind of get used to that. But that's what the banner class does, and I, for that reason, I really, really love Layout Builder styles. It's incredibly simple to use. So, Rod, earlier you mentioned uh, in the Bootstrap config customizing the styles there. That happens before. Yeah, those are separate. So, uh, Bootstrap Layout Builder gives you that these on the side. That's Bootstrap Layout Builder. Layout Builder styles integrates with that, adds this little che these checkboxes to the bottom of it, whether you're adding a block or a section, and um, they're completely separate CSS. Okay. Yeah. So, so is the, the, the link to modify the layout the Bootstrap styles in the presentation? Yeah. Okay. So when you go to Content Authoring Layout Builder Styles, you give it a name, you define the class, and you say whether it's a block or a section, and what group it's in. And you can have as many groups as you want. That's all you got to do. That's going to show that up when you either add a block or a, or, a, or a section. You have to add the CSS for the card class. Yeah? So how is this different than panels? Panels? Yeah. Well, panels isn't in core. And so my goal for this course, for this entire project, is to use core and contributed modules. So I chose Layout Builder. I'm, I'm not interested in panels. I'm not interested in paragraphs. I'm not interested in anything, at least for this, for today, except for Layout Builder, because it's in core. Yeah. My goal, uh, you kind of walked in a little bit late. My goal for this was to provide a tool using core and contributed modules that any site builder can use out of the box, because that's who I talk to day in and day out in, in the people I teach. And panels has no more development than that. Just checked it. It was like, um, I thought they just stopped doing it. Okay, so they've stopped doing it. It says no further development. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can add style groups, um, give it a label. It can be a checkbox or a select box. You can require a selection, and again, that will give you a different drop down to select different styles on the side. Really easy to configure. Of course, everything's about CSS in Drupal. You know how that goes. So be good at CSS and you should be fine. Um, so again, that's what they look like. If I chose a card in the demo page of this site, whoops, cards demo, there we go. In the cards demo, this is what a card looks like if you check card. Um, some, yeah. Obviously, I haven't finished the styling on this, but you get the idea. Uh, cards typically have a larger text at the top and a smaller text at the bottom. You can add a background to the block or a color to the block or whatever you want. Okay. We're doing actually pretty good on time. I'm just a little surprised. Feel free to ask every question you want, though. The next one I chose was Layout Builder Restrictions. Uh, this module may not be necessary for much longer. Apparently, it's coming into core, but there's no date set, which means Lord knows when that's going to happen. Yeah. For now, I'm fine with Layout Builder restrictions. What it does is provides a configurable UI for restricting blocks and layouts. So this is really good if, you have, if you're handing a site off to site builder or content editors. This shouldn't have access to all of the goodness on the right-hand side when you go to add a block, right? Uh, it also restricts the um, layouts that they can use. Sites can allow all options for a certain provider or restrict options by provider or specify individual allowed blocks and layouts. Uh, it's really, really great. Here's, again, I've already kind of shown that to you. When you want to restrict, for instance, the layouts for a section, you go to the content type, go to manage display, turn on layout builder, this will appear, and then you can say all existing and new layouts or only certain ones, and like I said, I typically do one through four column bootstrap uh, size. Uh, you can also restrict blocks, uh, all the blocks, some of the blocks, or whatever you want there. Yeah. Interestingly as well, the uh, you defining your own layouts like that <coughs> is actually really straightforward. It's a bunch of YAML files and some templates. Right. Um, Which again, I've stayed away from for this. 
Because, but, but yeah, it's it's great. I, I was pleasantly surprised how trivially easy it was to make your own layouts. Yeah, uh, I, I wish. Yeah, because one of your clients will ask for a really weird layout. Yes, and it's easier to do it that way than try and wrangle layout builders. It currently is like write your own layout for it. They, they never ask for anything weird. <laughs> So once configured, a builder editor will only be able to select the sections and blocks that you allow them to. The next section, or the next uh, module I chose was layout builder reorder. One of the things you cannot do is reorder sections, which of course drives you crazy, right? You can't move sections around. Well, yes you can now with layout builder reorder. Uh, no issues, no alternatives. Allow sections to be reordered by clicking an up or down link for each section. So what I did was when I installed it, I added a little bit of CSS just to move that apart. It was really, didn't look very good at all. But you can add your own CSS to make those buttons or whatever you want. Um, but literally, it's a move up and move down. One of the nice things with Aqueous Site Studio, which of course is the big daddy of them all, you can literally just drag sections anywhere you want. It's fantastic. Layout Builder doesn't give you that. This is the closest you've got to it. But again, it saves you all kinds of time and is super, super helpful. Um, again, I added a little bit of CSS just to improve, improve the layout of it. This is probably one of my favorites, section library. This allows you to save sections as reusable chunks of layouts. So, let's go take a peek at that. Up at the top, you're going to see, once you add this module, you're going to see, add this template to a library. That adds the entire page. So if you build a, a one-off marketing page that you want people to be able to reuse, just click. And it, give it a name, take, maybe take a snapshot as an image, and boom, they can instantly add full landing pages with one click. Site Studio calls this helpers. Uh, Promet Source has the same thing with Probus. So I thought this is a really good tool, and I actually have used it a lot. Even better, however, to me, is the ability to add an individual section to the library. So rather than building an entire page, I've added sections that I've created. So all you've got to do is click Add to Library. When you do that, it asks for a name, an image file, if you want to provide a thumbnail for it, you can upload it, which is really nice. Like, don't make me put a file path in here. It lets me upload the image and then add the section. Now, what does that look like? Well, I'm going to click import from library here. Uh, actually, hang on. Let me get rid of that. And I'm going to come down here and say import from library. And here are some of the sections that I've saved. So a banner section, pre-configured with text and a background image. Banner with text, a three-column video wall that will impor import a simple three-column bootstrap section with a video in each of the columns. You just replace the video. Uh, a landing page, that's the full landing page. Text image card, so text on the left with a title, text on the right, and then I haven't done images for all of these. The upcoming events section includes a view. I got a bunch of views on the demo page. Uh, a stats group and a header with a background image. So again, to insert, insert any of those, I just click. And there you go. I've got a three column section with a stats card, as it were. They don't, they don't scroll up like the cool ones do, but they're there. If you want to see them, well, go to content, Layout Builder Library, and here are all of the saved sections and templates. And you'll note the difference between a section and a template uh, with that. To me, holy cow, what a time saver. And they work really, really well, pre-configured. And of course, you can add images. You can edit them, um, delete them, and do whatever you want with them. And this is built in. It's automatically going to show up for you in the back end there. Super helpful. So that's, whoops, sorry. That's section library. Um, so there is an alternative here, layout builder library. Um, it adds a lot of functionality. Again, it's a little bit harder to set up. So again, I went with the least amount of friction here, 
for me, uh, section library works really well. Uh, and the reason I chose it, again, one of the best features of Site Studio and, Pro and uh, Probus is the ability to save those. And there's some screenshots there. Um, save templates will insert all the sections of blocks saved to that template. It's a very fast way to build marketing pages, blah, blah, blah. All right. Next one. You probably noticed that all of my layouts are opening in modals. Well, there you go. Layout Builder modal, uh, and the link is there. There is an issue here uh, that is related to the Bootstrap, uh, Layout Builder Bootstrap, or Bootstrap mo module. And again, it, this, uh, it gets, uh, part of that gets replaced with the iframe um, module. There are some formatting issues, but the best way to get rid of that is at that link there. You just have to turn off a couple of clicks, a couple of buttons, and all the weird, I'd show you, but I don't want to undo everything. It just kind of blows up your modal window um, with massive icons for about this big. You just have to turn a couple of things off and boom, it works. So look at that link there. Um, Layout Builder Plus is an alternative here, but like I said, I've never been able to get it to work. And if any of you have, man, I'd love you to show me. Uh, it moves the block configuration to a modal pop-up. So again, you've already seen that as we've been going today. Everything here is opening up in a um, modal pop-up window. And there you go. So much better spacing, much easier to use than shoved over to the right-hand side. The one issue here that I've not figured out yet is when you switch to code view, you get one line. <laughs> I, just, I just haven't bothered to figure it out yet. It's a CQ edit to five thing. Yeah, yeah. It automatically just shows. If you start typing it a lot, oh, yeah. you get bigger. Oh, it does, eh? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. yeah. Keep going. Oh, maybe yours doesn't. Yeah. Uh, I think it's the modal that's screwing that up. Um, I, yeah, I know. That it's, messed me up originally. I was like, what's going on? Oh, I know. Very I frustrating. Typing right? and the window just got bigger as I needed it. Yeah, very frustrating. I think it's partly to do with the modal, but I'm not sure yet. That's, that's probably the only thing I haven't figured out so far. Uh, so if somebody figures it out, that's cool. Uh, but this is a great, um, a great asset here. I'm so sorry. Keep clicking the wrong button. Uh, so it puts all your blocks into a modal pop-up. Again, giving you a much bigger window that you can use. Um, and it, of course, looks something along those lines. Every block type will open up here. So whether it's a basic block, a video block, a, a link block, no matter what block you choose, they all open in a modal pop-up. <coughs> and you can configure it at user interface layout builder modal. Okay. Um, did I go too far? You know what? I have... Huh. I think I screwed something up here. Oh, no, there it is. Direct that. Okay. You probably noticed that my when I click add block, it's not opening up on the right-hand side. This is the direct add module. Now, there is an alternative here called Layout Builder Browser. They both work really well. The only problem I have with Layout Builder Browser is you have to manually update every block type. What a pain in the neck. And you can't upload an image. You actually have to upload the images to somewhere in your Drupal site, like in your themes folder, and then write the path. Mm. Friction, right? Friction. So I love the direct ad, except it's starting to get a little long. So I might end up going back to the Layout Builder browser. If I click Add Block, you can see here, there's the list of the blocks that I've created. There's no way to reformat that. So it is getting a little long and a little bit unruly. Uh, plus, if I want to add any other block, I click the More button, and then it opens up in a modal pop-up, and I've got access to all the fields and all the other views and stuff, right? So, um, yeah, bit of six of one half dozen of another there. I like this format, and again, these are all of the block custom block types that I've created for this site that you can take a look at. So I love the direct add module. It's, I think, super, super helpful. Um, yeah, so once it's sold, it gives the drop down. It doesn't list pre built blocks or views. At the bottom, there's a more button to go and get those. If you have lots, then probably Layout Builder Browser is better, but you've got to create your own icons and you've got to manually add every custom block type you want, which is work. So um, that's if what they're looking for. If you install that and don't do anything and you go add, 
There's nothing there. Yeah, there's nothing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah it really is kind of frustrating. All right. We're almost out of time. Layout Builder Save and Edit is fantastic. Probably uh, this drives me crazy that Drupal doesn't have a Save and Edit button. So there's a Save and Edit node module and a Save and Edit layout button. Love it, love it, love it. I hate having to click Save and then going out and coming back in. This saves it and keeps lets you keep editing. Uh, that's, I mean, brain dead simple. That's what it does. No issue. Oh, you do, you can... Um, you can tell it which content types to use, and there's a whole bunch of things here like auto unpublish, auto save, this hide the save button, hide the publish button. I don't mess with any of that. I just like save and edit. It's terrific. All right, in 20 seconds or less, why I use custom block types. So all of the page builders use components and features. What I've tried to accomplish is that functionality with zero code, so I built a whole bunch of custom block types. Obviously, like basic block that's built in. The button is interesting. It uses a field rewrite. Instead of using the link field, the body is the text of the button. I have a link field, and then I choose the class, the bootstrap class for the button. Um, that's a little clunky, but it works. You can take a look at it. And again, that's a custom block type. Uh, card, again, just a title and a body, but the CSS is what makes it into a card. Simple GMAP module gives you a one-line address field that ha makes a Google map without needing the API. You don't have to pay for it. Woo. Files list, no brain dead simple. It's just a media field with unlimited documents and it just lists them down. A heading gives it automatic big text. Image embed, uh, is a, and I have a large selection of image styles built in to this site that you can take a look at. If you've never used focal point scale and crop, I can't tell you how much you should start using it. Uh, you can build your own versions of every image, and those are available across the entire site. And when you place the square, the little square in the image, wherever you want that focus to be on the scale and crop, it's, it's fantastic. I don't understand why everybody doesn't use it. Uh, large image embed, again, there's just some CSS wrapped around making it a, full, a really big picture. Stats card, two-column layout. So this one's really interesting. So I created a two-column, I created a block type with a heading left, uh, body left, heading right, body right. And then I used Layout Builder to style it, left and right. And then I insert it into Layout Builder as its own block. Kind of cool. I was kind of excited when I discovered I could do that. Um, and then a video with 100, that's 100% 100 responsive. If you've ever added a video field in Drupal, you know it's a tiny, tiny little thumbnail. Three lines of CSS make that 100% responsive in any container that it's in. What's missing? I haven't done a slideshow, I haven't done FAQs and a flexible card layout yet. All right. Uh, so coordinates are bad for accessibility. They are. Yeah, so I, that's, okay, so good, I haven't done it yet. All right. <laughs> I just talked to client out the accordions for an FAQ. Okay, um, I, have, I have two minutes and I do want to leave some time for Q&A. There's some resources here. I have a course on everything I've just shown you on how to build it step by step for yourself if you want. It's at OS Training. OS Training is not free. Uh, OS Training sponsored me to be here, so this is not a sales pitch. This is a thank you to them. There is a coupon code that's good for 25% off as long as you have your, um, your uh, account. Um, again, remote development using DDEV and GitHub on GitPod. Oprah I'll find him today, say thank you, and give him a hug. I walked up to him yesterday and I said, Ofer, you are my Drupal hero. I just want you to know that. He's a great guy. And every time I tell him that, which this is my second time I've met him, he then goes into a, a whole diatribe about how we can do it better. <laughs> I love that guy. I do have a weekly US, uh, OS tips video on YouTube. Um, and uh, those are almost always Drupal. Sometimes they make me do Joomla and WordPress, but they're almost always Drupal. Um, and then there's the code. All right, whew, I can't believe we've got to do that. 44 minutes. Questions? I've, I've got a, an option for you. Please. There's a thing called Layer Builder Operation Link. That when you go to content, you've got edit, 
that one of that drop down is now layout. Ooh. So it'll drop you straight into the layout builder from the content. Page. Ooh. Okay. So, well, the, and you just turn it on and it works. Yeah. Um, like I've that. actually got that somehow. Um, oh, I guess not. Oh, yeah, so oh, yeah. Layout builder operation link. Thank you. So add that one to the list. I will add that to the list. And there's a instant preview as you're typing. Uh, if you've not put it in the modal, you're typing on the right hand side. It updates in the main one. Will be, and I'm not sure how great that is. Operation link. Definitely going to check that out. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I, the, I went yesterday for the layout, uh, layout builder all weekend is what I'm here for. Oh, there you um, go. And she mentioned that, and I was like, how have I missed that? That's fantastic. Yeah, that is. That's really good. I'll definitely add it. I totally missed it, too. Yes? Could you add that link to your the backup, yeah. the GitHub backup thing you talked about at the beginning? Uh, yes. It's, it's, um... A model. Yeah, I was just, if you could add it to your PDF. I will. Yeah. It's a video. I've got a, a YouTube video on it. And I actually I don't use backup in my oh yes I do I do use backup in my report but it's I'll I'll link it in the, in the PDF and update it yes sir at the site that was built at that time when Brad Builder was still a release candidate sure and we like to move everything to layout builder is there a recommended workflow for that just install start using layout builder and add these modules and there's I don't think there's any way to convert a node to the layout, if depending on how you built the, the content types. But you can always turn on Manage Layout and rebuild the layouts in Layout Builder using all of those modules. You have to migrate? You don't have to migrate, just turn Layout Builder on. And how, how are the, if the content types are used a, paragraphs. sorry? Paragraphs. Oh, it's paragraphs. Yeah. Ooh, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Does paragraphs work in Layout Builder yet? There is a paragraphs Layout Builder there is. module. Does it Select. work? I don't use paragraphs. You see, I don't either. So my guess would be probably there's no migration. You have to rebuild them by hand. Yeah. That would be my guess. But yeah, I don't a lot of people are using paragraphs is because they've got nested content. Right. And the answer to that is don't nest your content. Yeah. Because it gets complicated really, it's really quickly. really, really messy. Yeah. Uh, somebody, and this is the biggest question I get, well, why don't you talk about paragraphs? Number one, paragraphs isn't in core. Layout builder is. To me, the Drupal community has spoken. So now Paragraphs is the fourth, fifth most popular module. If you list all the modules by installs, Paragraphs is number five. So that says something too. It's that I just away personally soon. always stayed away from it. Sorry? It's not going away soon. Oh, it's not going away. No, no. Paragraphs is around for, is going to be around for a long time. You might find it fit, Paragraphs actually fixes a particular problem that you guys have. And going away for it might be more trouble than it's worth. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it was just a matter of time. Was, a site was built, we wanted Layout Builder, it just wasn't yeah. quite ready at that point. But you could just you could transition to Layout Builder as you move forward, because they, they you can have them both working on the same site. Yeah, that's what that's what we're doing now. Yeah. I don't know. Man. I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. I would love your feedback um, on this session if you wouldn't mind. My email address is uh, Rod OS Training. I think I've got that here somewhere. Uh, oh, oh, there it is. Actually, you asked for that link. There it is right there. RodsURL.com, move GitPod to server. So that, that's a YouTube video that'll show you how to do that. And again, the PDF is RodsURL.com slash layout builder. You can download this entire PDF. Um, so down here at the bottom, I say it's still at the beginner stages. DrupalHelps.com is a site I'm building to support this endeavor. Uh, I'm going to have about 100 tutorials there in the next little bit. Right now there's two. Uh, I wanted to get this right before I... And so I actually, you're the first group that's heard about this. Um, so I hope, please feel free to use it. And again, give me feedback, rod at OSTraining.com. Have you played with the uh, GitHub Copilot stuff yet? I have not yet. Uh, it's apparently pretty darn cool. Yeah. So, no, I'm not. For the one support department, uh, Microsoft is making the top end of their AI infrastructure available for that. Yeah, wow. Lots going on, hard to keep up. Did you have a question, Chris? Okay. No. As far as the AI goes, I, I bought the plugin for JetBrains PHP Storm. Okay. And that's worth $100 a year just for writing a commit message for this, and it does really well. Generally, it's verbose, and you, you, it's much easier to, to, to edit it down than it is to add it, add it right? Mm -hmm. So that does really well at that, and the other thing is, write me a doc block for this. 
-hmm. And it looks at it and writes you a dot block, and then you have to edit that down again because it what tends to. Like, again? What was it? Uh, write me a dot block for this function. I started doing that constantly. And then you say, go ahead and do that for me. And also, it's really good for what does this do? And it will look at your code and explain what it does, or what's the best way for me to refactor this? It will actually go off and find something. Um, I, I don't think there's been a more exciting time to be in Drupal. I've been in Drupal since 2000, well, I started with Drupal 4, but seriously with Drupal in 2011 when Drupal 7 came out. I think this is the best time to be in Drupal. I, I, love, I love what we're doing. I appreciate every developer, every core contributor. They're, they're just doing amazing work. So. Anything else? We're a little over time, but I don't want to. Yes. This site that you were working, um, how do we get to it? Uh, oh, to get the starter site? Yeah. Okay. So to get the starter site, you go to rawturl.com slash starter site. Yeah, okay. And it'll spin up a Gitpod repository for you. You have to have a GitHub account. Yeah. Go through all the registration mumbo jumbo. But once that's done, you'll have a site that looks like this. And and it works in this simple, what's uh, in this screen with ddev Gitpod. And, and the site will look exactly like what everything I've shown you today. Feel free to steal anything. It's yours. You can have it. It's always nice when I'm like, I need to do this. I mean, you know, Rob's already built it. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big blocks and layout builder person, right? Yeah. I just want to do the standard things, put it in, allow yeah. my editors to move things around. Yeah. Big more around, steal around. It started off as a selfish project when I had to move 35, 40 through a Joomla sites to Drupal. And then I realized, well, maybe this could be helpful. <laughs> so I'm, I'm super glad that you find it helpful. So. There's another demo site. Did you see the, uh, I saw Ryan Sazrama do the Commerce Kickstart 3, okay. this new one. And they did all that layer builder stuff in it. And I've been looking at it. That's fantastic. And you just went, oh, they're using that. Yes. And they're using that. Oh, it's, it's all exactly the same as what you just said. Oh, that's and I was trying to work out how they built it. Oh, there you go. Thank you, everyone. Have a Thank super you. day. Thank you. Thank you very much.